All right, so you want to make an emissive texture, or otherwise a neon texture, in Roblox Studio. However, there's a problem. Roblox Studio does not support emissive textures. So how can we work around this? Well, in Blender, we can actually create our own texture, import it into Roblox Studio, and we can adjust the certain color values in that texture to make it glow, while also maintaining the detail in that texture. And I'll walk you through that in this video. So first, we're going to open up a new scene in Blender. I'm going to click Shift A, and I'm going to click on a cube. We're going to make a lantern. So I'm going to scale this cube down, scale it up on the Z axis, and I'll scale this out globally. I'll scale the top out, and this, this is going to be our light. And we'll delete the faces on the top. And we're going to select all of these edges here, bevel them, and then separate them by selection. And then we'll extrude them out like that. And we'll adjust them. Cool. And we'll add another cube. We'll scale it out. I'll scale it in. And this is going to be the top of our lantern. Maybe we'll bevel these edges too, just to keep the style. And then we'll duplicate this cube and then bring it down on the bottom, scale it up, bring this up. It's going to be the base of our lantern. And we want to make sure that these faces are uh, double-sided. So we'll select everything, press Alt-E to extrude faces along normals, and that extrudes them inwards. And then we want to select everything, press Alt-N, and then recalculate outside. And that just makes sure that uh, nothing is transparent. And we'll flatten these maybe. Maybe we actually just delete them. Okay, cool. Uh, and now we're going to get to texturing. So we'll hide all of our other objects in the scene, select these faces, and we will go into texture paint mode. Um, now, I already did this before, just as a test run to see if it uh, my technique actually worked again. But I will walk you guys through it again. Um, so we'll go to texture paint mode, we will select on add a paint slot, make sure it's set to base color, and we'll do lantern light tutorial, oops, I can't spell, wow, all right, and as you can see everything is showing up now, so we're going to be painting on one of these objects, and actually we can go into edit mode and separate by loose parts, go back in the object mode, select one of these lantern light pieces, and then isolate this uh, view on it by pressing the uh, slash key. And let's go to texture paint mode again, and now we have the uh, light applied to this specific lantern piece. So we'll just start painting over it with a uh, orangey color. And I'm painting this with a mouse, by the way. Um, you can paint with a stylus or a mouse, whatever you choose. I believe a stylus would be a lot better, but it's completely doable with a mouse. And we'll just take some random colors within the orange uh, value area, and we'll just apply them to the object. Give them a nice, give it a, like a nice dark border. We want to make sure we're getting a lot of emphasis on different colors. And I'm using the eyedropper tool to select different values of the object and then blend them in with each other. So eyedropper tool hotkey should be S by default, but I may have changed it. Um, so yeah, definitely check which hotkey it is. And we'll adjust the strength. And I'll get some yellow in there. And we will adjust more of 
the uh, color, the light, and we'll just add in a bunch of like random splotches of darkness in there. I'm gonna make sure there's a, a lot of yellow in the center because that's where the primary light source is. I'll blend that in. like that okay cool um, so we have our texture there we'll go back into the layout mode or UV editing mode sorry and we can see that our texture is already applied to this one object right there we'll turn overlays on and uh, let's actually select the right texture. So right there, but it's not applied to anything else. So we'll join everything here by highlighting everything and pressing Control J. Go to edit mode, and we're gonna select all of the UV islands and just drag them over top of each other. And as you can see here, as we drag this final group of UV islands over this texture, it slowly applies itself to the entire object. And that's pretty cool. So we'll go to layout, or uh, go back to layout mode and um, object mode, and we will select all of our objects. And then we will, let's go ahead and um, highlight everything, export it as FBX. And we're going to make sure we're our, only our object type mesh is selected and selected objects is selected. And we're going to make sure our scale is set to 0 0.01. We'll export this. Go to Roblox Studio. And then we'll go to Import 3D. And we'll type in a mesh of texture test. This is our lantern object here. Don't worry about this error. It just means that the texture is not applied to the object. We'll worry about that in a few seconds. Let's go ahead and import it. And when you import things as an FBX, they are imported in the group format. So what we can do is we can just right click and then ungroup and that separates all the objects. So we'll go back into Blender, go back into UV editing, and this is our image here, but it's not saved to our PC. So we wanna select image on the top here and we wanna click on save as Lantern Light Tutorial PNG. Um, now that it's saved to our computer, we can import it through Asset Manager and we'll click over here. Cool. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to add a part, not an object, but a part. Select the part, go to the plus icon here, type in Special Mesh and select the special mesh. We're gonna actually select the lantern material here and we will, or lantern object, and we'll uh, copy the mesh ID of the light. So I'll name this lantern light just for future reference. So we'll copy the mesh ID of the light object, go into the special mesh and then paste the mesh ID into it. And as you can see, um, there, it's like a duplicate of the lantern light. Uh, so we needed to make sure there are two sides to this because for starters, if you only uh, applied one of the, uh, if you only applied the mesh with one side, then it wouldn't show up in the special mesh and it would kind of break. We also wanted to flip the normals of it because it would just show up to be like inverted geometrically and we don't want that. Um, so we'll go copy the ID of the texture that we imported. We will add a texture here to the part and we'll paste the ID of the texture into the part. And as you can see, it shows up on the uh, mesh now. So what we can do is we can go ahead and click on the texture and we notice at the top here, it says color three. So we can adjust different values of, this color, of these colors. So this is red on the left green in the middle and blue on the right. Um, and
and these are at, they're at their maximum values right now, but we can actually push them past their maximum values, thus generating a glowing neon effect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead into our red value here. We're gonna type in 555, and you can already see it's really, really bright. So you may wanna lower it to, let's do three, or maybe four, and we'll do the same thing for our other colors to Maybe you want to lower that a bit. And then blue, let's try three. And red, we may want a bit more red. So we'll change that to 95. And already, it already looks a lot better. And we can just keep on adjusting these values as much as we want. Maybe a bit more. And it looks like there's an emissive uh, neon texture on it, but it, and it's, it's not, it's not neon. It's just, it's just an emissive texture. And that is pretty sick. And we will take our lantern object here. Uh, you may notice that it looks a bit, um, it's a bit difficult to, um, like move around or like select it because the hitbox has been expanded a bit. Um, editing the pivot, you can see exactly that. Uh, and that is a problem with the special mesh. I'm not too sure how to go about fixing it. I'm assuming it definitely has something to do with the scale, but adjusting it, you can see that it also adjusts the um, actual object itself. So I'll definitely look into that. Uh, you guys can also definitely look into that and just tell me what you uncover. So we're gonna we're gonna select the. Uh, lantern object here. We'll drag it and maybe move it to fit the lantern light. This may be a bit uh, non-foolproof. Maybe we'll scale it down too. Uh oh, all right. So there's there's one thing you should keep in mind. So sometimes when you export as an FBX, the pivots may be a bit messed up. So what we can do is we can go to Edit Pivot and click Reset, and that resets all of the pivots, all of the axis axis points. That way, when we scale it up, it actually scales up and set it to the side. So let's we'll keep on adjusting it. And we'll scale it up. Scale it back down. And then we'll give it a color. Let's do some metal. Nice, and we'll group that up. And there you go, there's our lantern. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We can just keep adjusting the brightness of the texture if we want it to be a lot more uh, emissive. We can also give it some light. So we'll do add a point light there and adjust the range maybe, and maybe the brightness. And that, even, that further amplifies the uh, light generated from the emissive texture. We'll give it yellow or orange. And we wanna make sure future lighting is enabled for this. Oh. Okay, I guess not. I guess you want to keep it a shadow map by then. Wow, that was a uh, that was rough. Ooh, not like that. Yeah, weird. Um, okay, so like I guess the point light did not really help with future light, but like with shadow map, it looks a lot better. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys figure out how to fix that. Um, that weird hitbox thing, please let me know. And yeah, I hope this helped out. I will see you in the next video uh, when I decide what that next video will be. Take care.